how does he manage now? The lights are coming on now. Ten lights. And they are out. And we are away on board with Ale. It looks like he's got a better start than Massey. It looks like Ale is potentially going to have a run on him. At the moment, he is just ahead and he has the inside line, does Ale. So, can he take the lead? Massey breaks quite late, but Ale's going to have the inside line. We've got on board with him. Who has the better traction? Massey on the outside looks to just about have it. As Massey takes P1 and keeps the lead. Further back, you can see a bit of bumping going on between some of the cars in the middle of the top 10. I think that's Charlie who's been involved in something. Had a little bit of a half spin, but has recovered and stayed P8. As further back, ARL Tuman's looking pretty quick and has already made up, I believe that's four places off the line. So a good start there from Tuman as you look at the tyre position, the position gained. And the DOS is another one who's gained a lot as well. There's this yellow flag and that is SLR Jack. SLR Jack is round at the middle sector chicane. He has lost it in these conditions or potentially come together with somebody and that is Jack down in plum at last. But it is Massey who leads at the end of the first lap. Drastic Blaze with his teammates incident is now up into P4 and Panther is in P5. So not a disastrous situation for Panther and he was one of the quicker drivers in qualifying so I'm expecting if he gets a decent bit of a run, he could be able to potentially fight his way back up as I'm on board with Tuman now. Oh, there's another yellow flag is there. That is OG James pulling off. He's letting people go for some reason. I'm not sure what's happened. Oh, he's got some damage. OG James has got damage. So he's let people go because he is going to need to make a pit stop to change that front wing. Sneak official is cheering on Scar Borger. Scar's another one that made a good start. Started P11 is now P6. Looking to move forward as, interestingly, the top two is starting to create a little bit of a gap for the rest. Zach is beast, not too comfortable in these conditions compared to Massey and Ale at the moment. But at the moment, Massey is keeping Ale honest as that is OG James, the yellow flag, letting letting Isolart Jack go. As Mizzy in the chat, Team Massey, Team Williams, and also I presume Team Panther cheering on Massey as, yes he is, he is looking pretty decent at the moment. He had that little mistake in the formation lap, but he's not let that phase him, and he's at the fastest lap of the race. Pulled away by a tenth of that in this lap. It's further down, are there any moves? I do know SLR Dosso likes a bit of a dive bomb, likes to take those risky opportunities with overtakes, as he's looking to get past Kevin. as OG James, as expected, is in the pits to change that front wing. So it's definitely going to cost him quite a lot of time. Always further ahead, Panther looking pretty close to try and make a move on Drastic Blaze. Blaze, had, but Blaze definitely holding his own in P4. Of course, he's a race winner in changeable conditions in Spain earlier on this season, so definitely likes the changeable conditions. Although, as I say that, commentator's curse, he goes deep and has to cut the chicane. Definitely should have picked up a warning for that one, as he's definitely gained time from it. But a little bit of a mistake from Blaze there, but he does keep the position. And if he keeps it on the track, then that warning shouldn't matter, although obviously he is going to be wary of potential further warnings. As Massey has now pulled out over a second on Ale, although as I say, that Ale gains a little bit of time back, so... It is going a bit to and fro, the gap between P1 and P2. Ale running really well in P2, the Alfa Romeo driver. SLR Dosser is SLR Teddy. 
Archer. That is SLR Teddy. Oh, as I just had a look and Panther was gone. Panther has spun on the exit of turn one and has dropped all the way down. I don't know whether Scarborg has taken the damage from it, but I know Scarborg has lost a lot of time as he was right by Panther when his spin happened. Hopefully he's not got damage, but either way, that is a real shame for Panther. He's just lost it on traction at turn one. And, well, that's allowed... Well, that's dropped him all the way down to P14. As looking at the battle for P1, and Massey must have made a bit of a mistake here, because the gap to Alley's gone down a bit, so... Ale certainly trying to pressure Massey a bit, and definitely keep him honest. And if they do have to make a pit stop, keep him within undercut range as well. As that's a key thing in these conditions. But further back, Tooman is definitely looking racy as well. I didn't expect him to be racing in these conditions. He's trying the move on the inside of Charlie in the penultimate corner. They've given each other plenty of room. This is good respectful racing between the pair of them. Can Charlie keep it in or can Tooman go around the outside? He does. Tooman makes the move stick. That is a brilliant move for the McLaren driver. As Charlie tucks himself in. And Tooman now goes chasing after Scarborger. As you have a look, Tooman's got to be quick this race, but he's already got a... And I did expect him to potentially be up there, potentially for the fight for pole, but he's already lost seven and a half seconds to Massey in the first five laps. So, he needs to get these moves done and quickly if he wants a chance of that podium. Good start, though, from Tooman. As Salardosa picks up the first penalty of the race. First, I'm sure of many, as, as we've seen a few offs already. It's very, very difficult to keep the car on track and pointing in the right direction. Here. As another driver I'd almost completely forgotten about, who is definitely going to be quick as well. Jack Mull obviously set the fastest time in Q1. But then got knocked out of the race. So, well, I will got knocked out of qualifying, retired from qualifying. So Jack Mull definitely is going to be quite racy. He's definitely going to try and make up the positions as well as he can. And here he is. SLR Dosso goes a bit deep, but tries to hold it round on the inside. Eventually he has to back out and Jack Mull takes the position. As Tuman, I said he'd be probably quite quick in these conditions, sets the fastest lap of the race. But now has encountered more traffic in the way of Scarborger. As AWL Kevin knocks on the inside of Charlie. But on the switchback, Charlie's got him back right back. So maybe Kevin ran a little bit deep there into, into turn one. And that caused Charlie to be able to get a better exit. Oh, Scarborger and Tooman battling out. Tooman gets past him into turn four, but runs very deep. And as he rejoins the track, Scarborger does just keep ahead. I wonder whether Scarborger made a bit of a mistake there. I'm not sure, but Tooman certainly looks pretty racy. This is going to slow the pair of them up. Yeah, lose them even more time. But yeah, I'm sure it's only a matter of time before Tooman makes his way up into P5. From then on, he's got a three and a half second gap to close a drastic blaze before he can think about making any more moves. As out front, the gap is still loitering around about the one second mark between Massey and Ale. It's Massey with 129.8, and he's and Ale, I think, has taken about a tenth out of him on that effort as here we go AWRL Kevin is right on the back of SLR Charlie again Kevin goes to the inside once again does he get the braking right this time does he make the move stick Charlie's still holding it around the outside that is going to turn to the inside for turn two so Charlie might have him here unless Kevin can go all the way around the outside they are still going wheel to wheel here. Has Kevin pulled this off? He has. That is a brilliant move from AWR, Kevin. 
As I saw Liam now is trying to sneak past Charlie on the outside of turn four. They make a little bit of contact, but they make it work. This is great clean racing. The clear has made the position. Great move from SLR Liam. Very opportunistic as Charlie made a little bit of contact with AWRL Kevin, and that ultimately caused him to just lose a bit of traction and lose a bit of pace. And Leah said, thank you very much. I'll be having that position as he moves up into P9. SLR Johnson and Jack Muller battling out for P10. As well, Dossa has regained that position, but Jack Bull is certainly not giving up without a fight. Is he going to maybe make a move here? He's holding it around the outside. As suddenly Bassi, Bassi's found a bit of pace now here. He's opened up a bit of a gap to Ale. It's now two seconds now, so Bassi feeding his way into the conditions, getting more confident and... Set the fastest lap as Jack Bull and SLR Dossa still battling it out. They've been going side by side practically since the first sector, practically for an entire lap almost. As Jack Bull had the inside line and kind of showed SLR Dossa to carve a bit of a cold shoulder there in turn one. Muscles his way through and takes the position. Moves up into P10. As Hicklin is the second driver to pick up a time penalty. As there's a yellow flag here, that is. Esselar Dossa has gone off into turn five, I believe. Exit of turn five. Got severe damage there and needs to limp it back to the pits here. Pretty much got no front wing. Maybe he's got a bit of weird rear wing damage as well, but he's fighting pretty hard for P10 there. But has lost it in these conditions. As up ahead, Scarborger is... Still keeping that position over Tooman. Tooman nearly made the move stick, but obviously either lost a wheel, either either locked up a wheel or just outbroke himself into turn four. And Tooman still hasn't made that move stick, although they are both closed in a bit on Drastic Blaze, so. Definitely could both potentially try and get past the Alpine driver. And lap nine now. This is now quarter distance to this race, so. As I think Drastic Blaze has made a bit of a mistake there, actually. Drastic Blaze, he was about a second and a half clear of Scarborg, but he must have gone off a bit there. And now the Mercedes driver is going to try it up the inside. He gets a bit beached on the, on the apex curb of the second to last corner, and that almost allowed Tuma to make a move. Scarborg keeps the position. Can either him or Tuman find a move on their respective compatriots here? Yeah, but can they? Or will Drastic Blaze hold firm? Gap now to the top three from Drastic Blaze to Zaka's Beast is now five seconds. So yeah, so it is definitely looking like it's a three-horse race out front, and Zach's Beast has found a bit of pace in that three-horse race as well. It's only looking a little bit quicker than Ali.
Oh, interesting, the AWRL Kevin has joined the battle for P4. As that's a lot, Dossa picks up another time penalty. It's pretty close to OG James, actually, so at least the two of them can have a battle. And it's not just a pair of them a considerable way behind the rest. Oh, as further back, Charlie is potentially going to lose another position. Can he? Can he keep ahead of Jack Mull, or can Jack Mull make that move around the outside? He's going for it. Is the Alfa Romeo driver, and he has made the move and moves up into P9. Oh, drastic blaze! I said he'd probably got a couple of warnings earlier on in the race, and that is a penalty for drastic blaze. As Massey's lost a bit of time to Ale as well. Massey is, did have the gap up to two seconds, but Ale and Zach is beast. Fighting back a bit. I wonder whether Massey's made a bit of a mistake. But it's still in P1. Now on to lap 12. And it is still Massey, Ale, Zakisby's top three. Scarborough still can't get past Drastic Blaze. There's the yellow flag in sector one. Who's that that's gone off? That is AWR Kevin. Has had a bit of a spin. He's only lost one position to Leah, so it's not all bad, but a little mistake from AWR and Kevin in these conditions. It was looking pretty good, but has lost a couple of spots. Now he's got to try and get past SLR Leah, does AWR Kevin. But look at this battle for the top three. On board with Zach is Beast now, and just the gap 1.6 seconds between him and Massey. And Zach is Massey. Interestingly, they have a lot more battery than Ale, but they're all. They're all in a very, very strong position at the moment. And actually, I think Scarborg could potentially have a bit of a run here. Scarborg looking pretty good. Can he potentially get past Drastic Blaze here? Using a lot of his battery as Scar. Is he going to dive up the inside here? No, he is not. He cannot get close enough. This battle still rages on, and now could potentially be a battle starting for P1. As this race has gone on, Ale has looked more and more comfortable compared to Massey. And the three of them still staying line of stun, but. Ali has looked a little bit quicker, so maybe we could see a move later on in the race as each lap is getting closer and closer to the pit, the pit window. But when, but do you pit? When do you pit? Probably best to pit earlier and get the undercut if you do have to make a pit stop. But... 
is a difficult decision because because obviously if the tyres do go to the end if they do go to the end just about if there is a chance that these tyres could do all 35 laps then having that pit stop will throw away a lot of time so of course I don't know how these guys' tyres are feeling but the pit stops will certainly happen in the next two or three laps or or not at all AWRL Kevin is having to defend now. I did say that he was looking on the offensive potentially on the drivers ahead of him when he was before he made his bit of a mistake out of turn one. But now Jack Mull is right on the back of him. Jack Mull's looked pretty quick. I did say he'd be a pretty quick driver and want to look out for this race. And he's definitely looking potentially for a move on Kevin, but he's not close enough. See Scarborger, me. Scarborger, two men trying to trying to do almost carting lines to try and get a bit better visibility. Trying to see if they can make a move past Drastic Blaze. At the moment, it is staying relatively the same. And SR Leo, AWRL Kevin, and Jack Mull beginning to close in as well. back to P1 and yeah, it's very very interesting this account between Massey and Ale it's kind of ebbing and flying a bit as SLR Dossa has had another spin as Errol Tooman and SLR Leah they're in the pits they obviously feel like the tyres would not make the end if they decided to stay out and so they've got into the pits and are going for the undercut on the cars ahead of them a very crucial outlap here as those 15 laps of freshness, so to speak, is going to matter a lot. This is a very, very crucial phase of the race. We've seen how hard it is to overtake here, so... See if this undercut works. It's certainly going to be very, very important. Tubman's going to have to gun it now. And to try and to get that position on Drastic Blaze and potentially that position on Scarborger as well. Is anyone else going to potentially try and make a pit stop and try and make a bit of an undercut here as well? That is the question. As is the yellow flag and that is SLR Dossa is out. He's crashed on the entry of the final corner. And Massey is definitely going to approach that section now. Has he crashed? He has crashed. Oh, he's crashed actually on the entry of the final corner rather than on the pit lane. His car is gone now and there is no safety car, but... Oh, that could have been close as Scarborger hops into the pits as well, obviously trying to get the undercut on Drastic Blaze. Drastic Blaze obviously feels confident in his pace and he's going to stay out, but... I can't help but feel that... Tooman's going to gain quite a lot from this with this undercut. Definitely going to be close. Scarborger has exited his pit box. So it is all about Tooman now and whether he has gained enough time in the undercut. And look at that, he's gained a massive amount of time. And what about SLR Leah as well? He is. He has not gained the position on Fort Scarborger, but definitely gained a lot of time. Now Tuman 
It's potentially in prime position to jump ahead of Drastic Blaze as well. Very smart decision there by Tooman to trigger the undercut. As yeah, he's absolutely flying now as Tooman. Gapping Scarborger, who's also on those fresher tyres. So he's going to get... Although, as I say, that Scarborg again, he's got two or three tenths there in that one corner. So, maybe not by that much. But, yeah, Drastic Blaze, AWRL, Kevin are going to have to react now. Oh, as Massey sets the fastest lap on the older tyres. So, there's still life in his yet. And Drastic Blaze and Kevin stay out. So, they're elected to go long. Have Gerda tyres at the end of the race, perhaps? Charlie now peels into the pits. Oh, his Golden Egg Fryer has gone. Golden Egg Fryer has spun. I was on board with him as he was another driver who had not pitted, but he has spun on the exit of the final corner and it's going to compromise him big time as Panther's undercut Charlie. Look at that. Panther, after that spin, has made up a position in the pit stops. This is the other flag in sector two. Who is that that's gone off? Who is that that's gone off? Is that Kevin? That is Kevin. And he has lost his entire front wing here. So he was in a pretty good position, was Kevin, but he's made another bit of a mistake in these conditions. It's very, very tricky. And now he's going to have to crawl back to the pits and put on a wing change. That's going to severely compromise his hopes of potentially getting a top 10 finish. It's Massey Alley Zach still staying out. What about Drastic Blaze? He's coming in now. I can't help but feel like this is a day late and a dollar short for Drastic Blazers. But he's certainly going to be jumped by Tooman and how many other people is he going to be jumped by? That is the question. I'm going to go on board with Tooman now. Sets the another fastest lap of the race. And yes, him and Scarborger have cleared Drastic Blaze. And what about Leah? What about Jack Mull? They've both cleared Drastic Blaze as well, so he's dropped down to P9. So look at that. He's lost so many positions due to the undercuts. And it's so difficult to make a move in the wet, especially around Hungary, that... Well, Blaze has really compromised his race with that. Oh, as Jack Mull tries to send it on Leah there. This goes up the inside into the middle set of chicane, and I can't help but think he was a little bit too far back to try that. Certainly got a decent bit of pace as he as in comes Ale, in comes Zaki's beast. So they're now going for the undercut on Massey. So Massey is gonna have to react to this. Cover them off. But let's see, are they gonna come out in traffic? Are they gonna come out behind SLR Jack? No, they're not because Jack has gone into the pits. But here we are, we saw how powerful the undercut worked for Tooman. Is it going to work for these two against Massey as well? As look how much Tooman's gained on the pair of them as well. He's now just 2.5 seconds back. He's got older intermediate tyres than Zach has beaten SLR Alley. But Tooman's pretty good in the wet and... Going to be absolutely gunning it now and trying to stay... And trying to catch up and potentially have a shot at our podium here. Very good recovery drive from Tooman thus far. But let's see Massey. I assume he must probably react now to SLR Alley. He's losing, a, he's losing a lot of ERS, which is usually a sign of drivers trying to just get back to the pits as quickly as possible. But Alley's gaining a bit of time on him at the moment. So these new tyres definitely working well, but how well are they going to work for him? Massey is in. 
He is the last driver to make a pit stop and he was the leader. This is all about just whether Ale can get past him. I think that his beast would be a bit too far back. But Ale has gained over half a second on this outlap, so it's going to be close. It's going to all just be about their pit entry and their pit release. As Ali's just got to dump this ERS now. He's pretty much only going to have one shot now to get past Massey. Has he done it? No, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. And the gap maintains itself at relatively the same distance. So that's very surprising, man. Ali did not gain as much as on Massey as I thought he would on the undercut. And Massey does keep the position and has those fresher tyres. As Kevin pops in the fastest lap on those newer tyres, proving that he is one of the quicker drivers in the wet, as he, as he did say in the chat. Oh, as SLR Ale picks up a time penalty. That gives Massey a nice bit of breathing room, that does, certainly. As Ale was... Well, Ale is one of the drivers who... Potentially be the challenge for Massey for his victory. But now he's just lost quite a bit of time. Looking at this, interestingly, Tooman's got four lap older tyres than Zaka's Beast, but Tooman is still quicker than him. So, Aerol Tooman is really pushing hard here, trying to get as close to the top three as possible. You can just see how much time he would have... You can just see how much time he lost in the traffic as... And he's gained most of that back up. Of course, he is going to definitely have... A couple of tenths lost due to just the general freshness of the tyres for Zach's Beast, but Tooman's going well now. Could he potentially be on for a podium here? Ali's got his penalty, of course, but Tooman's running well here. Here we go. Can the McLaren driver potentially get past Zach's Beast? As Tooman is now... Yeah, Tooman is now... He's gained another couple of tenths there on Zach. But you can see... Oh! i tell you what you can see. You can see Massey's got a penalty. Massey has a penalty. So the top two have a three-second time penalty. And Zach's going to know this. Tooman's not going to know that Massey has one. But he is going to know that Ale has one. And if Massey and Tooman can get close enough, then this is... Potentially... If Zaka's Beast and Tooman can pull their finger out a bit and get a bit of time on these top two, this is potentially the battle for the lead. Here we go. Tooman, he's keeping consistent with his lap times. 
and Zach's definitely going to have a bit of rejuvenation. The gap is about four seconds between him and Massey. And I am going to get that gap to leader now. As all further back, Jack Mull up the inside of Leah. Jack Mull takes P6, and he's been looking pretty quick himself. But Leah is still on the outside there. Can Leah hold it around the outside? Jack Mull closes it off, and Jack Mull takes the position. As looking at this at the moment, it does look like Massey has a bit more pace than Zach, so he might just get away with this. But it does hang firmly in the balance. It's just about whether drivers... It's just about whether a potential safety car happens. It's just about whether Massey makes a bit of a mistake. Ultimately, the win is still on for Zach, and the win is therefore still on for Tooman. Because if Zach can get within three seconds, then Tooman might be able to as well. At the moment, we have a look at that last lap from Massey. It is a 128.5. What does Zach manage? He manages a 128.1. Him and Tooman have gained four tenths on that lap on Massey. Keep that up, and they'll be within the three seconds of the next lap. This battle for the victory is not over. Zach is feeling very, very good in these conditions, and... And he could potentially get within this three seconds of Massey. It's certainly going to be a close one. But this race is not over. And the one thing I tell you that Zach and Tooman both need that will help them massively is a safety car. If there's a safety car, then... then that gap is going to be completely wiped out to Massey. Although this lap... Massey's kind of turned on the burners a little bit. He's gained a bit of pace. He's fought half a second up on his best lap time thus far. And he's composed himself and does look like to potentially at the moment have the gap covered. He's nearly got three seconds on Ale himself as well. But of course, that penalty does still keep things very interesting. Massey does set the fastest lap of the race. <laughs> After I was saying that Zach and Tuman were gaining on him quite a lot, but... But has been quite inconsistent. That is, the one, that is the one thing I will say. He's been quick one lap and a little bit slower the next. And he's still obviously driven fantastically as he is in the lead of the race, but... If he does have a couple of worse laps, then... Well, that gap between him and Zach is just 1.2 seconds after that penalty. So, certainly anything could happen from now until the end. We're now on, yeah, we're now on lap 26, so still been no safety cars yet this race. And how's Jack Mull's pace? He did look quite quick. It did look like he'd be one of the quicker drivers in qualifying, at least. Ooh, as Charlie picks up penalties. Currently sitting in P10, just two seconds ahead of SLR Jack, so... Potentially cost Charlie a point that. As Jack Moll, I believe, is closing in a bit on Scarborough. He's in a bit of no man's land at the moment. Just needs to keep himself. Really, to himself. Who was he? As look at that. He has no helmet on in his car. He is just driving around. There is just a head in his cockpit. And his driver has no helmet. That is fantastic stuff. 
thank you Codemasters for showing us how drivers drive without a helmet definitely going to have lost a bit of weight from his car that that help that lack of a helmet but yeah that's quite interesting I presume that's because he joined the session during Q1 but it's always funny to see a bit of a glitch now interestingly the gap's gone down between Massey and Zach so Massey has set that fastest lap but but now has lost a bit of time to Zach so it's just eight tenths and at the moment Zach's keeping two but at bay they should both get on the podium here with Ale's penalty but Zach will want that win and Tuman will want a shot at that win as well if he can get close to Zach as the yellow flag in sector 2, sector 3 that is golden egg fryer who's clearly had a moment don't know whether he's picked up damage, yes he has so currently in last position is golden egg fryer and not having a great one at all, he's peeled off into the pits I wonder whether this is potentially to retire or whether he's just going to repair his wing. But he has now gone a lap down on the leaders and... It's a bit annoying for him, but... Very, very tricky track and the wet is hungry. As no, he is not retiring in the pits, he is continuing, so fair play Golden Egg Fryer. are now counting down there's just six laps left for Massey now at the end of this one and got a decent bit of battery relative to the cars behind them with the exception of Tuman who's potentially saving himself for the end of the race and maybe Tuman thinks oh it's just really about me and Zach and Ale here and oh there's this yellow flag and Scarborger is out Scarborger has crashed and there's a safety car there is a safety car here and that is what I was saying, that is... That is crucial for this race. That is going to mean that Massey's losing a bit of time as Jack Mull is, has stopped on track, so I'm not sure what's happened to him, but Scarborg is out. And that wipes out Massey's advantage at the front. And now suddenly Zach has beat us in effective P1 here. Massey is going to have to pull that gap out on the end of the race. But Scarborger is running in a brilliant P5, but he's just lost it. And that is sometimes what can happen in the way. You can just be completely fine for well, pretty completely fine for 30 laps in Scarborger's case, and then make a mistake and be off. But but wow, this certainly spices things up, and this certainly hands the advantage to Zach's beast. As the safety car is going to bunch the field up.
as Hicklin has taken this time to get himself a free pit stop onto fresh tyres. And why not? If you can catch up to the field, Hicklin, then you can help him out nicely. And Golden Egg Fryer will spare a penny for his thoughts, really, because he is a lap down and is not going to be able to unlap himself under the safety car. He does have no penalty, so he would gain quite a bit, but... But unfortunately, he cannot unlock himself, and therefore... He's going to unfortunately have to stay in 14th, and then... Let other people get past him. As AWRL Kevin has decided to pit, and... There's some position changes going on here. I wonder whether Golden Egg Fryer is trying to unlap himself, maybe. I don't know. Bit of a weird one. But Ke yeah, Kevin's decided to pit here. He obviously feels like... It's... So... That's brilliant. Hopefully he can get back in as soon as possible. Yeah, sorry about this. Luckily it's happening under a safety car, so I'm not going to miss anything. Yes, we are back. At some point in the next couple of laps, the safety car should come in. And we can get racing once again. Yes, should come in next lap. Everyone should catch up next lap. And from then on in... Lap 33, lap 34, lap 35. Just three laps for Massey to eke up enough of a gap to potentially get the win still. Ali obviously has the penalty as well, so he's potentially going to lo lose out even more than Massey. But Zach has beaten Tuman, still looking good with no pens here. Although Tuman does have a little bit of an excursion off the track there, so... Another little mistake, as yep, as now Kevin is caught up and Hicklin and OG James should catch up relatively soon as well. OG James could potentially be on for a point or two here if he, as he has no penalties, so it would be a reward for him for staying in the race. Although potentially needs to get a little lucky with potential incidents ahead of him. And of course he needs to hope that he catches out to the safety car before it comes in. As Hicklin's saying, it's making him drive to a delta, and yeah, that is allowing, but he is still caught up, so. That is good, at least. As the safety car is now coming in this lap, OG James will catch up. So it will be a full field of drivers taking this restart. But the eyes are on the P1 man, Massey F1, the P3 man, Zachers B25, and the P4 man, ARL Tuman. It is really between them three and potentially even Jack Moll, who's recovered from, from his qualifying incident for the victory. Massey is... Slowing down massively to try and back up the field as he now decides now is the time to go. And Ale is hounding him on the restart. But Massey leads it away and kicks B1 as Jack Moore's had a bit of an off, I think. He's had a bit of a mistake and Lear has taken the position over him. So Jack Moore from being on, 
on for a potential podium has dropped back quite a bit now. And he's dropped behind Panther even as well. He's dropped way back. I think he's got a damage as well. That is a disaster for Jack Mull. But further ahead, Massey has begun to got a bit of a gap to, to P3 Zaka's Beast. Zach has not been able to follow Massey as much as he'd like. And so, and so, yeah, Zach is beaten now two seconds behind Massey. So he's already got two seconds of it. Does Massey, he already, had, he already has two seconds of the three second gap he needs. And this is going to go right down to the wire. These two are, I believe, one and two in the championship as well. So it is a crucial last couple of laps here. If Zach is beast wants to get a victory and potentially fire himself back in with contention. As Massey now enters lap 34. He's all of the RS here and so it's a pretty quick lap whilst he's at it. But the gap is 1.8 to Zaka's beast. So at the moment, Zaka's doing enough, as is Tooman as well, to get the position on, on Massey. Oh, it's further down. AWRL Kevin. I said he had those fresher tyres and he's using them to good effect. Moves up the inside of Charlie for P8. So at the moment, those fresher tyre gamble, he's working for him. And Kevin is going to definitely gain a position on drastic blaze after penalties. But how many more can he gain on those fresh tyres? This is the yellow flag, and that is Hickman. Hickman, I believe, has made a little bit of a mistake. But we have just over one lap remaining now. Tuman has dropped off a little bit from Zaka's Beast, and at the moment is not within three seconds of Massey. So Massey, it does look like he's going to come P1 or P2 here, but at the moment, Zaka's Beast is just doing enough. Last couple of times, Massey has just about edged the fight against Zach, but but at the moment, it is Massey who it is Zach who is going to take the victory. One lap remaining now. Zach has more ERS than Massey, so he can use an awful lot of it on this straight, and he's going to need to use it pretty much everywhere here if he wants a shot here. One lap to go, just. Seven tenths of a second after penalty separate Massey and Zach for the race victory. It is all about just can Massey nail these corners? Can he get the gap out? He has one lap fresher tyres than Zach, and maybe Zach potentially is close to a penalty himself. Doesn't want to take any risk with that. The gap's now up to 2.5. This is going to be so close. as Massey is now going through the middle sector now. He has only a handful of corners remaining. But they are some pretty tricky corners. It just needs one little slip up from Zach and it is back in the hands of Massey. But at the moment, Zach is just about the favorite to take this. You can see the Narda settling in as the gap's now 2.8, just three corners to go now. Massey has navigated one of them. What about Zach? He's lost a bit of time. The gap's now 2.9. It's going to be so close here. Massey's rounded the penultimate corner. Can he do this? The gap's just flickered over three seconds, but has gone down again. This is going to be too close to corner. Don't know who's going to win this. Massey is going to come up towards the line now. He is going to take victory on track. Has he won it overall? Zachis Beast has gone across the line, and Zachis Beast has done it by just one tenth of a second. Massey gave it his absolute all, but Zaka's Beast is just the race winner, just by 0.085 seconds. What an ending to this race. A commendable effort by Massey, but it was not enough as Zaka's Beast clinches the victory. ARL Tooman gets P3 after penalty, with Ale getting P4. Of course, having a three-second penalty himself, but wow, what an ending to the race. It is just Zaka's Beast who just claims the victory. As your top five are Zaka's Beast, Massey, Tooman, Ale, and Leah.
but what a what an ending to the race what an ending to the race it is just Zaka's beast who gets the victory only just but wow that certainly had us all on the edge of our seats there's a top three Zach Massey and Tuman. it's the same top three as we had in Austria as well I believe these three are certainly three quick drivers and Tuman, what a recovery as well for him but but wow, that was close at the end. I did say a safety car could spice things up, and that is exactly what it did. So close at the end there. I did think potentially that Zach was going to lose it, but... But no, it is just Zach is beast who gets the victory. What a brilliant ending to the race. Please have driver of the day votes in the chat. It's a pretty difficult one. It's got to be uh, got to be one of the top three for me. Getting driver of the day. Tuman's drive from 13th, getting that undercut and getting that podium because of that undercut on a several drivers. Massey the drive from pole position, just missing out on the penalty. And Zach is beast. Well, he needed a bit of luck with the safety car, but he just stayed within the three seconds and did get the victory, but... Yes, it was a bit of a slow burner, but that late safety car certainly livened things up. And and Zach's beast gets the victory. As I can see Sprightly in the chat saying up the McLaren, so still supporting the McLaren team. Hello, Sprightly. Um, hope you're well. And can you please tick your boxes please and I'll get on with the interviews so starting off with Tuman in P3 well it's a trip to the podium um and but you certainly had to work hard for it after perhaps I'd say, I'd say potentially a little bit of a blunder in Q2 with that medium tire selection so kind of just talk us through that and talk us through your race we saw you made a we saw you made a pretty blinding call to go for the undercut, which ultimately got you this podium. So how do you feel overall? Uh, yeah, I mean, how do you make a, a track that's difficult to overtake on even more difficult to overtake on? You add a bit of rain. Um, I mean, the likes of myself, Ali, Massey, Zach, um, all had basically the same pace. Um... You know, you know when when push came to shove, none of us could really do anything when um, when in each other's dirty air. Um, I'm a bit annoyed that Zach's last lap was as slow as it was, um, but hey ho, he got the win, so I don't suppose he's really all that bothered. Um, but I was secretly hoping I could have um, posed Messi for P2 as well. Um, but yeah, that. Really, my race was ruined from the qualifying. Uh, I made a small mistake on my medium lap, which would have been enough to put me through. But yeah, but I suppose I was trying to cover off um, just in case. You know, it was wet and not quite wet enough. Um, yeah, a little bit. I, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with the comeback drive, but yeah, I, I feel as though that um, there was a lot more on offer today. Uh, yeah, still a good drive to get yourself a P3, though. So, well done. Um, now on to Zach... Uh, now on, oh, sorry, now on to Massey, of course. Um, got them mixed up, obviously, with how close they were at the end. Well, uh, pretty much leading every single lap from lights to flag. And I think you maybe even got... I don't know whether you did get the fastest lap, but one of the fastest laps of the race as well. Um... But just obviously the late safety car and that penalty cost you. So how do you feel overall? Obviously really close at the end with that win. But really really close at the end to get the win. But but P2 in the end. So how do you feel? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, it was... Um, I think two of them made it pretty, pretty obvious with, what, um, with how the race was going to be. We all had similar pace. Once I'd uh, cleared off ale on the first lap, it was you, you can't overtake in the way around Hungary unless someone makes a mistake. Um, penalty was a stupid penalty. I cut the corner when I got the penalty on turn four. It was just a silly penalty, and 
I always knew if there was a late safety car that was going to cost me. And then hey, for us to go five laps to go, there was a late safety car. And then that last lap, I was pushing and pushing. And I saw it go to 3.1. And then I just didn't get the best exit at the final corner. It dropped to 2.9. I was like, ah, oh, damn. But no, if, if anyone deserves a win, it's it's like it's beast. He's finished second enough time. So no, GG was a, we all had a pretty good solid pace in the works. So yeah, he deserved that one. Uh, yes, uh, very, uh, very uh, magnanimous in defeat as as always. Although I say as always, it's not really very often. <laughs> but you're not on the top step of the podium in this division, but yeah. Um, talk us through just generally just what looked like a, well a pretty nightmarish qualifying to kind of judge with the whole raining at the end of Q2, raining at the beginning of Q3, the whole changeable conditions, and then of course a full race in the wet we saw you make a mistake on your formation lap as well so kind of just just kind of just all in all just how do this just general mixture of things like how did you feel like general generally confidence wise and how do you feel just trying to tackle your way through the conditions um yeah, i think it was tricky for everyone um i was quite glad that it tried up in q3 because i made a mistake on the inters and hit the wall in q3 um so i was quite glad to try it so i had another chance to have a go at it um, yeah, the formation lap, I was just trying to get my rears a bit warmer and do it too much. Um, so, yeah, thankfully it was only in formation lap. And then, yeah, the race being into the whole time meant that my setup was fairly okay with it because it was a dry setup, which I just changed. I think I just upped the ride height by one. Um, so, yeah, it was pretty tricky. There was a couple of times coming out of the chicane in sector two where I lost the rear of it uh, in front of Ale, which you probably saw. Um, but yeah, it was um, it just keep concentration. Unfortunately, the penalty cost me. Uh, yes, and now on to Zaka's beast. Well, as Massey put it, yeah, you finished P two far too many times this season. It was only a matter of time before you got the win. Obviously, your first. I've heard it's your first since season five Canada, which was back when we were teammates um, in in house. So um, yeah, firstly, congratulations on the win. Secondly, just how do you feel in general? Just with everything that went on in the race and your victory thank you it's been a while um i just really thought about i didn't know i was gonna win this race my setup wasn't great step two i was losing the most time out of everybody but i just had to keep it clean make sure i didn't pick up any warnings and just finish the race and i managed to win Uh, yes, well, well, I mean, <laughs> as, yeah, as, as you said, just very, very, very clean. And like, um, when you saw that Massey got the penalty, do you think before the safety car that there was a shot of the win? Or was it just all just about just, as you say, just driving, keeping it with, within the white lines and just keeping it uh, relatively calm and not really spinning at all? What was kind of just your general thought with with that? Well, as soon as I saw the three seconds, I knew I had to push a bit more. But I just couldn't gain that much time. Safety car really did save me in that race. Uh, yes, and obviously, like you've come P two quite a few times this season, and you've got and you've got the P one now, and um, now um, now this race, that's a few extra points back against Massey in regards to the championship. You've been really, really close all season. Really, I can think I can think of countless occasions that you've both been on the podium. So, kind of, how do you feel about that? And are you thinking about potentially like using this when it's kind of a duck broken and maybe thinking about just trying to get a few more wins, get a bit closer, give Massey a bit of a fight? Or are you just thinking about race by race? Um, after this, I think I've gained a lot more confidence of winning another race, so hopefully I can fight Massey more and win the championship. Mm. Uh, yes, uh, that's, that's what we like to hear and would love to have a full-on battle all season long and maybe even drivers like Tuman obviously had a little bit of a slower start to the season but picking up some form as well I believe you missed Britain but have got podiums in your last couple of races so certainly one to look out for as well and yes thank you all I mean um with about five or so laps to go to be honest a bit of a boring one, this one, but Division 2 never disappoints, and we had that fantastic ending to the race. Thank you all for watching. Please join us at 9pm for Division 3 in one hour time. Yeah, Thank you all for watching, and good night.